Hey guys, Cliff Gray with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunt. Today we're going to show you how we put up our wall tents in the wilderness. And we use wood frames that we cut from the actual forest. And we use dead trees, typically standing trees. Our usual setup, particularly in a, in a hunting camp, uh, where we know there's going to be snow load on the camp, we try to use conifers for our side poles and our ridge pole. In this case, this is just a summer camp. And given what we're, we're putting the camp in here, we're, we're settling on just very straight aspens, right? And so it's a little tricky with aspens because they just naturally have a little more curvature. Um, but try to find poles as long as you, uh, it, it, you know, as straight as you can find them. And then typically when we cut them, you know, we always have a tape measure. And if our tents are 16 by 20, Generally our long poles, like our side poles and our ridge pole, we're shooting to find them you know, around 25 feet. You can get away with a little bit shorter, and of course you can get away with a little bit longer, but when you originally cut them, it's best to have a little excess. You can always take the tips off once you have your tent set. All right guys, so the first thing we do after we cut our poles is we just lay them out in, in the, the setting of the tent, right? So our two side poles and then our ridge pole in the middle, and then on the ends, we start with what we call our big bucks. And that's basically gonna be a cross buck that we're gonna set the ridge pole in. And so you can see Jimmy, what he's doing, he's just putting a cover on the ridge pole. And that's just to protect our tent from all the friction and just the general movement on the top. And then on these big bucks, what we do is we've kind of found that for us, the happy medium is to tie them at 137 inches, right? So where they sit in the ground, and you'll, you'll see this as we go through the process, to where we actually lash them up is 137 inches. And that's gonna give you kind of the right angle to keep everything taut and have the, have the tent completely upright, but not off of, the, off of the ground. So we just use kind of a basic traditional lash on these, and you don't have to overcomplicate it. But one of the tricks is that you don't wanna get it too tight. Whenever you bring up the, these bucks, they're gonna tighten up a little bit on their own. So I usually start with the clove hitch. So I start with my clove hitch there. And then I go to my 137 inch mark there. And this is where you don't wanna get crazy with pulling them really tight. So I bunch up the rope because I'm gonna have to do a bunch of different wraps and on these end ropes, they're pretty long so you could spend all day kind of threading them around. So I try to keep like, you know, maybe a, you know, four finger width. I'll go around three times. Then I'll just kind of make sure there's a little movement there. And here I'll just center wrap them. Three times. And then you can get away with just running this to your stake, your end stake. But what I like to do is just clove hitch off on the other side. And that's just the basic lash that we use on. We use this on our end bucks and then we also use it on our, our shorter bucks for our side poles. All right, so you can see here Ellis is just cleaning up the poles. The side poles and the ridge poles, we try to take all the little knobs and snags off of them. You can see this side pole here. You can see where it's been cleaned up. And particularly on Aspen, that's going to save you a whole lot of hassle uh, as you put up the tent and as the tent sits there and rubs on the frame. All right, guys, so on our shorter bucks, I'm gonna tie them off right around 55, 56 inches from the end to where you're actually gonna set this side pole. Uh, I'll lash them there. And just so you know, kind of the measurement on these, it's just, it's gonna be personal preference and 
it's going to be a matter of how tall the walls are on your wall tent. So you're going to have a little trial and error there. A lot of, like in the beginning, the best thing to do is start with longer poles. That way, once you get the the side pole up, if you need to adjust, you can take you can take some off actually the feet of the poles, or you can always take some off the top. All right. So as long as you have enough, you'll be good. A lot of times what happens when you first start with long poles, your angle is going to be too too wide because you want some angle down so the feet of these are actually supporting the side pole. So you kind of find the happy medium. For us, it's around 50 to 56 inches. And I'm just going to lash these the same way. I just use a couple less wraps. You don't, you don't need them as, uh, as secure as you would on the end stake. So I use the same. We use mule tape, by the way. And this is, uh, this is the tape, you can get it from electricians. Once they've used it, it's pretty readily available. And they pull, they pull wire and stuff through conduit with it. But it works really well because it's flat and it's, it's incredibly strong. All right, so next me and Ellis are gonna just thread the ridge pole through the top of the tent. And you'll see it's, there's nothing really fancy about it. It's just kind of a kind of a, uh, a little technique to it, but it's more just kind of scrambling through the tent. All right, Ellis, go ahead and bring, the, bring it to me. I'll jump in there and thread it down there. All right, so we've, we've pulled the tent taunt on the ridge pole, and Jimmy's going to just put a nail in about halfway within that little grommet there, and then bend it over so it doesn't pull loose. Perfect. And then going on the other end, same thing. And the key is to keep that tent taunt along the ridge pole. All right, so now we go to each end. We put the ridge pole on top of our big bucks, and we're gonna do a couple lashes on that, and those will go to our end stakes, and we'll do that on each side. Uh, one little trick here is when you put your bucks underneath the ridge pole, just to make it a little bit easier to lash it, you can just stick, stick a little chunk of wood or a rock or whatever just to keep those, those poles elevated. So when you're wrapping your line, you've got a little space to work your hands underneath. All right, so now we're gonna drive two long end stakes on each end of the tent, and we're gonna utilize these a lot whenever we actually lift the ridge pole and kind of do our first part of setting the tent. We'll, we'll kind of snug up one end rope just tight enough uh, to, to have a little support, and then the other end we will uh, we'll use to actually pick up the tent. All right, so now we're gonna start raising our tent, and this is really kind of a minimum of a three-person job. You can do it with a couple guys, but uh, generally you're gonna need three guys to do it. All right, so like our, our end stake and end rope here is loose because we don't want it to be tied when we obviously raise this. One guy's on one end of that buck, other guy's on the other uh, buck on the end of it, and then one guy's gotta just basically hoist the middle of it up, and then your two guys are on your end, they're gonna, they're gonna stick the ends of the bucks down into little divots that we've already dug with our shovel, and generally you'll see after we get it up, we're gonna have to adjust those divots a little bit, you know, inward, outward, maybe a little bit tighter just to kind of get where the tent needs to be. Okay, ready guys? Okay, go ahead and work your ends there. All right, so as you can see, the tent is not quite high enough. You can see right here, it's still, it's still uh, you know, rolled up on itself on the ground. So we're just slowly gonna migrate the bucks up to the proper height. And Jimmy and Ellis are just gonna slowly move them in.
All right, so we've got the tent relatively close. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the other end and do the same sort of adjustments and raise that end. And then we'll kind of fine tune both ends uh, to the, the proper height. So before we go over to the other end, we're just gonna, we're gonna tie this, but just very loosely, just to keep it so the tent doesn't fall that way when we pick it, pick it up. This, this hypothetically can catch it. If you've got an extra guy, it's nice to actually leave one guy over on this end because he can support the tent from going you know, towards the camera or you know, towards the guys that are trying to raise the tent there. But what we'll do is we'll just loosely tie a knot here so we got plenty of slack. And then on, when we're on that end, we'll just keep in our minds that if, it's, if, if it feels like it's gonna fall one way, we'll pull it towards us because we have support over here. All right, so now we're gonna raise this end of the tent. As I mentioned, just to reiterate, the tent really can't fall this way because we have it tied off loosely on the stake over there. So when we go up, we're, get, we're gonna basically hold a little tension this way and not let the tent go that way. Usually on a flat piece of ground like this, it's not a big deal. You'd be amazed how, how supportive these are as you, as you lift up the tent. But if there's a, a incline or a decline, that's when you gotta kinda worry about the tent shifting more and that's why you wanna kinda use that stake to protect you. So here we're looking, we can see that the tent's still not quite tall enough. So Jimmy's cut, uh, digging a couple little shorter divots in, inside the buck so we can raise the tent up a little bit more. And the best way to do it is try to do it evenly on each side. If you get carried away on one, one of your bucks, you'll end up with severely lopsided bucks and you have to kind of go back and start at zero. All right, so the next thing we're looking at is we're just looking at now like the making sure these bucks are perpendicular to the ground this way. So on Jimmy's end, that buck is kind of kicked uh, towards that end of the tent a little bit. So he's going to keep the same level with his divot, but he's just going to go out to his right a little bit towards the camera so we can straighten up this, this set of bucks in that direction. All right, so we're going to just tie this off. So we've got the tent supported and we'll do our final adjustments. Before we do the final adjustments, I'll address probably the question that's running through your mind and that's why the hell wouldn't we just pack in a frame here and put it on a nice metal frame that fits perfectly? And that it is a lot easier to do it that way, but it's also a pain in the ass to pack in those metal frames on horses and mules. In a lot of ways, it's gonna take you kind of a mule and a half to do that. And for us, it just doesn't make sense for how many wall tents we put in. and it's good to just know how to do it this way so you're handy with a wall tent, right? You don't always have to have the frame that came with the tent or whatever. All you have to have in this case is really the canvas, stakes, and then a few, a few ropes for your corners and your ends. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our side rail on. And uh, the first thing to kind of figure out where you're at is typically what we'll do is we'll each just grab a corner of the tent and we'll kind of figure out exactly where the wall's gonna end up. And then also at this point, you can, you know, if there's any vegetation, rocks or whatever that are gonna be at the base of your wall when you put it up, you wanna kind of get rid of those. One of the tricks, particularly in snow, is when you set your walls, your side walls, you want them to be perfectly perpendicular to the ground. You don't want them in, in here, because obviously if you stake them inside, you know, your wall point here, your corner, then you lose room inside the tent. The more painful thing is if you're, when you're during hunting season, if you stake them out here where they're beyond the wall, you can get enough snow up on top of them that it's damn near impossible to get them out once it freezes melts and freezes from using the wood stove inside. So it's key that you kind of focus on clearing that right now so you can put your stakes in and keep that wall perfect. All right, so we're putting up our smaller bucks for this side rail. One thing that we try to do, you don't always accomplish it, but it, it helps, is your inside foot of the buck. So that side, you want it to overlap with your big buck's foot because you can tie them, you can lash them together there for a little extra support. For whatever reason, sometimes you don't get you don't get everything quite square and you won't be able to do it, but generally you want to have that overlap for a little extra support. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hold them here. We've already taken the wall of the tent to see where that side rail is gonna end up. 
And what you want is you don't want the wall to necessarily be like wrapped around the side rail. You kind of want it just touching. So you have a you have a consistent angle off the tent and the E basically drops over the side rail, okay? So we've got it, you know, close. We're gonna have to adjust it after we get the rail up there. All right, so at this point you can see now we got the, the side rail up there so we can check to make sure we're in the right spot. And that's about right. You got an eave that goes all the way off and then it stays, you know, uh, at the same angle. <coughs> Over the years, I, when I first put wall tents up, we would always have a space here. And the idea was that that would avoid the tent rubbing against the side rail. I found that if you put the, if you put the wall right on the rail, as long as you keep your, your ropes tight, you don't have damage to the tent. It's kind of a made up thing. I don't know, one of those, one of those myths, I guess, that gets handed down. So what I found, <clears throat> there is a downside of doing that though. That's that if you have room in there, it doesn't matter how tight you keep your ropes, eventually snow's gonna belly in right here. So I like to have that corner where it's touching my rail and I keep that even eave. All right. So once we have it where the wall is perfect on this end and that end, we got the eave set perfect. I'm, I'm going to tie this up for support and then we're going we're gonna to stake this rope off for our corner. All right, so now we've got the small buck lashed to the big buck. And then here, you can just take your corner, your corner uh, basically tie down here. And I just do a wrap on the side rail and the buck. Okay. Let's check it. Yep. Fucking money. All right. So now on this end, we're going to do the same thing. Jimmy's going to tie the small buck to the big buck, and then we're going to pull the wall and do our final adjustments and stake it, stake the corner off. You all right, Jimmy? Yeah. So you can see here, it's, it's about right. The eave is perfect. The height of the wall is perfect, and it's about perpendicular. So we'll just wrap. We'll just wrap this small buck and then go to the stake here that Ellis is working on. I'll come in past it. So you, or you want to come in and then scoot it over? Yeah, it works. All right, so the last couple things we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull over all of our, our side ropes here and we're gonna stake them out here so we pull the wall even. And like I said, it should be perfect, perfectly perpendicular to the ground below your, below your side rail. So we'll do that and we, put, we generally put one good rebar stake for each, for, for each pair of, uh, of the side ropes. And then the last thing we'll do is we're just gonna, we use little, you know, basically nails like uh, just like a, we call them spikes, but they're like, what are they, like an eight inch nail or something like that? Eight or nine inch, yeah, here. They look like these. And what we do is we take a piece of twine loop and we loop it on the top, right? And then we put that through our grommet on our tent. And then we drive these down to hold the wall down. The reason that we don't put the nail right in through the grommet is one thing, they tend to just work their, themselves out uh, quicker. But the other thing is in the late hunting seasons, you can actually get these frozen solid where you just can't get them out. And what you can do if you're, if you're in a rough situation, what you can do is you can cut that twine and then you, know, you can come back and clean up after yourself after it's thawed out. But if you don't do that, you'll have these down in your grommets. You can actually get in a situation where you, you have to almost cut your tent in order to get it out of the ground if they're frozen. So that's how we do that. 
All right, guys, so this is basically your finished wall tent setup, all right? I'll give you a close-up of, you know, how we've pulled the walls and staked down the, the actual, uh, the base of the walls and all of that. But this is your basic setup. You know, if you're just going to go out elk hunting for 10 days or something like that, uh, this can get you by, right? You don't need to fly on the tent, <clears throat> and you don't really need to do anything special beyond this. If you're setting your tents for, for several weeks, you know, uh, maybe more than 15, 20 days to a few months like we do, you're gonna wanna add a fly. Uh, it adds some rain protection, but the main thing is it, it, it adds a bunch of life to your tents, right? The UV light is what's gonna deteriorate the canvas. So we put heavy tarps on our tents, mainly to just <clears throat> get a little more lifespan out of them, all right? These tents, they will shed water without a tarp, uh, particularly if you're very careful about not touching the roof from the inside or, you know, setting things against it. They'll shed water just fine. So you guys that are just doing a, you know, a week or 10 day trip, this setup's gonna work for you. The other thing that we do is if we know that the, a tent's gonna get a bunch of snow, we'll add one more upright in the center of the ridge pole inside. We call that kind of our snow pole, and that's gonna add some support and it, it makes it so there's a lot less risk of that ridge pole breaking. One thing that's really unfortunate about if you end up with a bunch of snow, like you can see here, we've got this eave just perfect. Like I wouldn't worry one bit about snow bellying in, in here, but if the tent wasn't set perfectly, you got a ton of snow on there in the late season, you run the risk of that ridge pole breaking. So it's nice to have a nice upright uh, support in there. If you don't do that and your ridge pole breaks, unfortunately, with this setup, you've got to take it all down pretty much. There's no, you basically got to redo the whole process and it's a major pain in the ass. So you, so outside of just the obvious safety factor, um, you want to put one in there so you don't have to worry about it. But that's the setup. And for our first 10 of the season, I'm pretty happy. That's a pretty good setup. Everything's straight, square, and nothing to worry about. So just to give you guys a close up of some of the details here, you can see how the eave is on the side pole and you can see that it's staked out here okay with rebar all right and then down here you can see what i was showing you with how we use twine for our pins here okay so that's that little trick there here's our corner setups and you can see all that stuff is nice and straight and perpendicular here you can see there's very little belly from the top of that ridge pole there and the big buck down to the small bucks. You want those to be nice and nice and taut and straight. Okay. Then here the same deal. You know, an even angle coming off the eave right there over the side pole. And then Ellis is finishing up the pins here. And then you can see here how we have that those side lines staked out. All right, guys, so you can see that we added a nice uh, fly for the tent. This is just a heavy-duty white tarp, okay? And we put our wood stove in. You can see how we, from three points on the uh, spark arrestor of the pipe, we'll, we, we lash that back down to our bucks so that pipe is very secure. And then the last thing I'll show you that I mentioned before is I'll show you inside. We added a snow pole there. That's another tent in the background, just some junk on the ground for another tent we're gonna set. But you can see we just notched the top, okay? And that's a snow pole, and that gives that ridge pole a bunch more security, particularly when it's having to deal with wind. And there you can see, got little tools on it, but there's our wood stove all set up. All right, we hope that was helpful. There's a finished wilderness wall tent. What do you think, Jimmy? Looks good. <laughs>